Hey, this is Mike King, which I want to welcome you to another Alive with Mike. And today, yeah, we want to talk about um, app development costs and how you can much more easily figure out uh, uh, what goes into an app and the app development costs through a app called, um, as a matter of fact, um, appdevelopmentcost.com. Let's see, is that the full URL? I want to make sure I get that right for you. App development cost singular.com. Okay. So I want to want to dive into that because um, uh, all the time we get we get asked and say, uh, you know, how much does it cost to develop an app? And or hey, I want an app, you know, and and the, the people typically behind this um, are in industries other than tech, and so therefore they don't know all that goes on and is involved with app development. And um, that's uh, important in, in terms of, because it's such a vague, you know, develop an app, you know, that's, um, that's even more vague than I want to get a website because with an app, uh, I mean, you've got the Google Play Store, you've got the Apple Store, you've got uh, web apps, um, then the, the, you know, you break down within that. So there's native, there's hybrid, all these types of pieces on that thing. And, and so, uh, and then, you know, just figuring out the cost, I mean, they, they, uh, they Typically, for some reason, people think that apps are going to be fairly inexpensive to develop, and uh, that's typically not the case. I mean, you have to think that a lot of them have the kind of the same kind of complexity infrastructure of a website, um, but then you have the app store pieces on top of that, and then meeting the compliance of the actual app stores and some of the integrations with the mobile devices, uh, tablets that they're trying to use. So you've got these stacks of pieces there, which add complexity to it. And um, therefore, an app typically is more costly than just a website or uh, or a web app. But you know, um, first things first. There's you know the the first question people we have to answer is well, how do you want this developed? Okay, because there's multiple ways to do that. Um, there's native. Okay, there's and then there's another term which is called hybrid. And then there's another, you know, web apps. So um, a native app is developing it in the native language of that platform. So like the Google Play Store runs on the Android platform, which uses uh, Java as the coding language. So to develop a native app for the Google Play Store, the app needs to be developed in Java for that. Okay, so that's just um, for the Google Play Store now. Apple uh, has a, a different coding language, you know, so they use a, a Swift code as their programming language. And so if you want it native for Apple, you're gonna need to develop it in Swift. And so you're right, if you're gonna develop it natively for Google Play, Android, and Apple, you're gonna need two apps, two, two builds. And uh, that's if it's native. Um, now that gives you all the functionality of those languages, whatever they wanna offer, so that gives you the most flexibility. So native app development, has the most power, but it's also the most costly, uh, most costly to maintain because you have to do things separately for Apple Store, Google Play Store, that type of thing. That's native. Then the second one is um, hybrid. Okay, so a hybrid is a um, more versatile, more efficient, more cost effective way of developing. This is typically how we would like to tackle apps. And uh, that's going to involve um, a method which is a hybrid of that. So it is one code base, not Java, not Swift, something else that we develop in, then wrapped into a, a layer, typically some type of um, framework that um, does some magic on the code that allows it to be submitted to the Apple Store and to the Google Play Store in ways that each of those will accept. So it's one code base um, with some structure on top that funnels it into an allowable source for each of those apps. So again, obviously that would seem more cost effective, right? Because you're developing, you have one code base, you make changes in, in uh, to your code once, and then you can be able to push those to both stores versus the others where you, they're totally independent. Uh, so that's the hybrid. And, and again, that's uh, now, it's come a long way. There used to be that that had less power than a native app, and, and there were a lot um, fewer features that it offered. But hybrid's come a long way, and it's going to offer um, 90, 95% of what a native app could offer. Okay. So when I come back to native apps, you have to think about like the Facebook app is a native app, for instance. And so if you look at the Facebook app on an um, Android device and you look at it on an Apple device, 
um, the screens may look a little different. The, the um, menu items might be in different locations. That's because you know, they are technically, they're Facebook's app, but they are technically different. This is an Android one. This isn't a um, iOS Apple one, okay? But with a hybrid app, um, it's gonna, they're gonna look the same because it is technically one app, one code base um, with this layer on top that, that allows it to be pushed into both stores. So uh, we often like to work with hybrid apps and they've come a long way, more power. I think that's a um, you know good tool for the majority of users going forward in the future. And uh, the third one, and then is a web app, which is basically a mobile uh, responsive website geared towards the mobile user. And it's not necessarily gonna be, it's not gonna be in the Apple Store or Google Play Store. It's just gonna be available on the web. You know, you can uh, save an icon to your phone so you can access that, but uh, it's not gonna be found in those Play Stores. That's a web app, which is technically a website, uh, just happens to be uh, focus totally on mobile users. All right, so those are the three types, and um, that's going to be kind of the foundational question when you go to appdevelopmentcost.com. That's going to be one of the first things they ask you. Okay, so they have a number of questions they're going to run you through, and that's a key one. Then they then so now I'm talking about the site itself, appdevelopmentcost.com. Um, it's going to run you through next questions. Then so um, I and I've got those listed in the blog post that you can come to afterwards here. The link below. Um, you know the the icon for the Apple Play Store, I mean, that's simple. Everybody's gonna do that. What kind of security do you need? Um, that's gonna determine you know, what some of the costs are gonna be involved. How do you wanna handle your data storage? Are you pulling data from some um, in-house source or is it all um, you know, uh, web-based on a web server, uh, cloud storage? That's gonna impact things. Uh, what kind of login features do you gonna need? Um, is there gonna be you know, user accounts that need to be set up? Uh, there's typically going to need to be some type of admin area for admins to be able to uh, make edits to the site. What what are those functions? Uh, how is all that going to work? Um, media features. Okay, so this again can play into whether you need um, native, hybrid, or web. Uh, so look at those media features because if you want to tap into the the phones. Um, if you want to have push notifications, for instance, okay, then you need to be able to tap into the um, operating system of the mobile device, the iOS system, the Android system there. And so to have push notifications, you are at least going to have to do hybrid, um, native or hybrid to, to get push notifications. You can't do push notifications um, on your phone with a web app, all right? So that's a key. And then you know, the complexities are, you know, you need to access the camera, uh, the video camera, to the record feature within the phone. Uh, so some of those features you need to be able to use. So the more complex they are, um, the more you, the, the highest complexity is going to definitely need native. Um, but again, in 90 to 95% of all the features of a native can be done with a hybrid but it's tapping into those, so but that's important in cost developments. Like, you know, we're going to need to allow the user to use their camera, use their video, uh, use a QR code scanner, push notifications, um, you know, some, some of those other features within your phone. And uh, then there's um, user design features. There's, uh, do we need any third party integrations? You know, not necessarily, uh, you know, again, could happen at any of those levels, but is there some data we need to pull and sync with, push data, pull data, all those types of pieces, that's going to add cost to it. So this um, appdevelopmentcost.com is a app development cost calculator. They had uh, reached out to me, kind of blogger outreach because of my business blog, and um, it, you know it does well with getting traffic, popularity on the web, and so uh, they wanted to recommend that... Um, I make people aware of this tool. I looked at it, I said, yeah, that's helpful. It's even helpful for me in my business. Um, not necessarily the pricing. Their, their pricing comes through, it gives you a ballpark range. It does. I think it's on the high side um, from what my experience is, but better to be on the high side than the low side. And, and it goes, runs you through those features and you answer all these questions. It kind of gives you a ballpark range. Um, it does require some of this knowledge information I'm giving you, you know, because it just says native or hybrid. So you have to kind of know what those pieces are. And so what I'm trying to explain to you today, so you can use this tool um, effectively, but it goes through, it's ultimately going to give you a range and you're going to be able to see 
uh, what the cost is. And um, that's important. Now, again, with apps, you need to recognize that there's typically going to be um, ongoing cost uh, because there's, you know, monthly for maybe your um, web uh, cloud storage of uh, data. Um, there's going to be a some yearly things, so, you know, um, security, encryption. There's going to be the Apple Apple a, a yearly ninety nine dollar a year developer license fee. I think um, Google Play's is only one time, and that's only like it's twenty five bucks or something like that. Sixty nine, twenty five. I think it's only maybe even twenty five bucks. I have to look that up again. But uh, that's a one time cost. But there, there are again, there are ongoing, and then you have to take a look at, particularly if you're using. Um, hybrid or native member ios versions change just for instance um, android versions change and so when there's major updates there that could impact uh your apps you need to make your app comply with those pieces so you have to have worked onto that so you have to figure in there's ongoing costs so it's not an app is not i will build it they will come and we're done um, it's going to be ongoing you have to invest in that piece there so that's what i wanted to cover today and, and again, um, appdevelopmentcost.com, if you're thinking about building an app, that's where you want to go. Hopefully this post is helpful on giving you some background in uh, some of those key early decisions, you know, it's going to ask you. So now you know what those mean and um, uh, gives you a guide on how you want to answer those questions. And, you know, you can see by going one way or going another way what the cost range, ballpark range difference is when you do those. So. That's the key today is uh, take a look at that and hopefully you know, that will help educate you um, on when you say we need an app uh, and then we say, you know, how do you want that built? Those are some of the, the key things you're going to want to think through, talk through that can have a wide range of uh, cost implication. Um, and again, apps can be great for personalization, for using the custom features of mobile devices like push notifications and um, for giving a great kind of uh, user experience that you can't just get with a website on a mobile device. All right. So uh, that's what I got for you this time around the Halftime Mike podcast. As always.